spread. Um, and that's, but, but again, zero on the intake plus four is going to be a great starting point on almost any engine. So now that we set up our parameters, let's jump into our tables. Let's configure everything so it's going to be ready to go um, so that we're going to be able to go and start the, start the engine up and have approximate uh, fuel and ignition values that should get us started. And then uh, we make sure our breakpoints are scaled correctly as well so that we're going to be able to index going up to high boost levels on this, 30, 40 PSI, and that we're able to go all the way out to something like 10,000 RPM if we rev it that high so that we don't have to rescale our breakpoints at a later point in time in this video. All right, so now let's close out our parameter section here and jump into our tables, or our fuel tables and ignition tables. We need to go ahead and linearize our fuel tables and set up our spark timing tables so that we can get into boost. These tables are definitely not optimizing or optimized uh, to begin any kind of tuning with. So looking here, we have our table we can find under options. We can see it in three bar values, expanding it out into boost pressure. We can collapse it down into our a one bar, 1.8 bar value of the stock map sensor to approximately uh, 10, 11 PSI. And then we can collapse it down here to NA tables. So I like to go and collapse it to the NA tables, linearize this first, and then extrapolate it out into boost. And then we'll take a look at our spark timing and how to optimize that in just a second here. So let's jump into this table right now. We're gonna pick the high point here in the table. We can see right about here, which is right, right about 800 RPM. And then we also can see right about here, Looking here, it's about 5,000 RPM. So we'll go between these two. We'll do Control-P, we'll linearize those. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna copy it from my column 10. I'm gonna go and paste it into my column nine. Then I'm gonna do Control-D and just walk it down. Pretty straightforward, nothing complicated there. And then next I'm gonna copy and paste from column nine, copy it, paste it in column eight, Control-D, walk the values down a little bit. Same thing, we're gonna keep copying from our column and going into the next lower column and using control D to lower it down. And we can see I'm doing linear steps or my spacing here is linear. That's always gonna be the key here with the fuel tables. You should never have intersecting lines. You should never have um, one particular uh, column here of fuel being that's uh, oddly spaced or having unlinear un spacing. If you're finding that you're seeing that when you're doing your tuning as you're going through and actually adjusting everything, you probably have some kind of a fuel pressure problem going on. So I always recommend to have a fuel pressure sensor wired in when you're doing your tuning. You can see any kind of oddities in the fuel pressure and typically it's gonna to correlate to, again, some kind of a weird fuel pressure problem. Let's go here and keep that process going down the line. I'm gonna go into column six paste it from a column seven, control D, and I'm just gonna move down again. Nothing complicated about this. We're just building a linear fuel table because what we have from Han data isn't a very good starting point, And it's gonna cause a lot more aggravation and work long-term than just going in and trying to fix it right off the bat here. So that's what I always like to do as my general rule of thumb so that everything is going to be set up and ready to go when I begin my tuning. Now the values that I'm placing here, I don't know if they're gonna be accurate or not to get this started. Um, I'm just kind of guessing where we're at and we fire it off and see what the air fuel looks like and we'll deal with it at that point in time. So if the values that I'm putting in here, again, aren't, aren't gonna work 